Hello, everyone. All right, we are going to go over um, NFTs today. So this is a very hot topic in um, athletics and all of cryptocurrency. Um, I'm going to try to simplify as best I can. But as always, uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or anyone on the TNNS team and that we will do our best to answer as much as possible. Um, so today with NFTs, I want to discuss what they are, why they are valuable. I have about four different um, reasons uh, that NFTs ha ha can have massive value and then the future of NFTs with TNNS. And as we sort of move and develop as um, a cryptocurrency and a company and you guys are holding TNNS, why um, NFTs are going to become very, very important to those of you that are that are TNS holders. All right, so to start, NFT stands for non-fungible token. Now, uh, that is a big word that a lot of people um, might not understand. And so I just wanna break that down into what fungible versus non-fungible is. So non-fungible means it's unique and cannot be replaced with anything else. Um, so, everything in a marketplace is either fungible or non-fungible and so i want to give the example here of bitcoin versus the mona lisa bitcoin is fungible because it can be divided into smaller portions and the token itself could be replaced if i have a bitcoin and i sell it and then i replace it with another bitcoin that Bitcoin is still worth the same amount of whatever it is at the time. Right now, it's around $56,000. So if I sold my Bitcoin and I went and bought another one, it's a different Bitcoin, but it's all worth the same, right? Um, and Bitcoin is also able to be divided into smaller portions. A lot of people don't know this, but the, the smaller portions of Bitcoin are called Satoshis. Um, now, versus a non-fungible asset, something like a really expensive piece of art like the Mona Lisa. There's only one original Mona Lisa. And so therefore it would be considered non-fungible. You cannot replace it with anything else. Of course, there are um, prints of it, but it, the original is the only one. Next slide. Okay. All right. Um, NFTs can be anything uh, digital. So it could be art, music, property, your image. And this is why people are incredibly excited about NFTs and the space has grown dramatically over this last year. I think in February, the market just started to boom. Um, and that's because there's really limitless possibilities on what could be an NFT. And, and really the only limitation comes with creativity. So uh you know your image could be an nft and of course you know using that in a, in a game or um as an avatar um in the the metaverse is is something that we'll, we'll discuss as well um when you own an nft you are owning a piece of data on the blockchain so the blockchain is really the technology that verifies your ownership and where that um, piece of data or art or whatever it is that you're owning digitally has gone over time. Um, and that's why it's, it's so valuable. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't know if something is counterfeit or not with the blockchain, you can completely verify the, the authenticity of a piece of art, um, or the NFT. Uh, so you're not actually purchasing the actual thing. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why would I purchase a piece of art that's digital when I can just literally have that same thing, you know, copied on my computer screen? And, and it's because you can verify that you own the original piece of it. Uh, so I put on here in art terms, anyone can buy a print of the Mona Lisa but only one person can own the original and that's where the blockchain comes in um, and the technology that we're using. 
why are they valuable? And I have four reasons why an NFT could be valuable. Um, the first is actually the first edition. So a first edition of any collection of art is going to ha have more value, um, especially as it becomes more popular. So on here, this this picture right here is actually a crypto punk, and they're one of the originals um, in the NFT space. They came out in 2017, I believe. A, a crypto punk right now does not sell for less than six figures. Um, many of them are millions and millions of dollars, and really, it's because the first editions are are much more popular. So, let's say uh, if you're an athlete, we we do a collection your first collection is going to be your most valuable collection especially as you become a better um, athlete or it becomes more popular within the space uh, those are going to be ones that are, are going to gain value the second reason nfts are valuable is do they provide utility so a real world benefit uh, for example, using your digital image, your avatar in a VR game would create utility uh, for that NFT. So let's say you're a tennis player and, and uh, your avatar, your NFT avatar is put on our marketplace, it's sold, and then it's used within our VR game. Now the skill set within that, um, that, that piece of work, that NFT, can be used within the game. So it's like you have a, a uh, amazing serve and it boosts the ability within the, the VR game uh, to serve. So uh, that would have real world utility as the gaming space becomes bigger. Um, this is gonna be a huge, huge thing. And um, as the metaverse grows and, and these are become much more mainstream, you're gonna see people, um, especially athletes, being able to use NFTs within that space. The other is it's unique or rare. So the ability uh, to take a moment and make it digital. So right here, you'll see um, that's actually NBA Top Shots. Uh, so they've taken unique moments within the basketball space and they've created NFTs with them and they sell them for a, a lot of money on the, on their marketplace. Um, and same thing, we'll have the ability to do that as well with TNNS is take unique moments um, and be able to, to capture those and, and make them NFTs and be able to sell them within our marketplace. Uh, you know, I think uh, Jack Dorsey, he, he had... Um, his very first tweet was uh, captured as an NFT and sold for, I think, $2.9 million or something like that. So if something is unique or rare, um, then it, it definitely gains value. And then finally, ownership history. So again, with blockchain technology, you're able to verify who owned it. Now, of course, now that's on, um, you know, that's a digital key, but if somebody famous owns uh, an NFT, then it automatically gains value. I think I just heard um, somebody talk about how Steph Curry purchased a Bored Ape Yacht Club uh, NFT. And because of that, the value of those went up dramatically. And, and again, those are, those are pieces of art um, NFTs that are worth millions of dollars. Where can you buy NFTs? Um, there are marketplaces similar to eBay, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. So the really popular ones right now are OpenSea, uh, Nifty Gateway, Super Rare, all places that you can purchase NFTs and also post them if you're a creator. What's really, really cool and unique is that TNNS is in the process of creating our own marketplace. Um, we're hoping this will launch here early 2022. Uh, we have really, really uh, cool things that are happening all at once. And so our marketplace is gonna be unique in that uh, there won't be any minting fees. So creators are gonna have a space where um, they're able to purchase a subscription and post uh, almost all their art on our space and um, not have to pay until, you know, minting fees will be actually done or um, occurred by the, the buyers. And so this is uh, really, really special for not only artists, but as artists and athletes collaborate, 
um, you guys are going to be able to have a, a really special relationship where royalties are being able to be split between artists, athletes, and uh, agents or, or managers that are, are helping with this. And um, so this is going to be huge for us in the future. And, um, and we're hoping to take over the NFT marketplace, especially as we see some flaws with OpenSeas and some of these other sites that are occurring, you know, huge fees with just being able to purchase or move um, art. And so uh, we're really excited about that. And as we move into the new year, this is going to be um, a, a really big, big uh, launch for us. Um, I just, so I just hit on all these things where, where TNNS is, is going to be different. The, the fees are much lower. We're, we're running on the Binance smart chain versus Ethereum. If anybody has any ex, uh, experiential knowledge with NFTs and Ethereum, they know that the, the gas fees are incredibly high. And so uh, the value of being on uh, the Binance Smart Chain is that it, it's really, really low. And of course, uh, the royalty piece of it is huge for our athletes and uh, any content creators out there because uh, as collections start to become more popular and more valuable and they continue to be sold, you will be able to get royalties in perpetuity. So that will be very, very special in a way for passive income with, with our athletes. Um, we're working on signing not only athletes, but also uh, artists and musicians. And um, we're working in the movie space as well. So we have a lot of really um, big things coming for TNNS. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody, uh, especially those that are watching this, that uh, hold our token right now. You are part of the TNNS revolution. Um, we are building a better future for sports. And so this is not just um, something that, hey, you have it now and, and it goes up to a dollar and you want to sell it. This is something that uh, you're part of the community and we are making sports as the crypto world becomes more popular and more mainstream, you are on the ground floor of a revolution and be proud of that and promote it. And, uh, and it, it is something incredibly special and we're really excited about the things that we have coming uh, in the future here, in the very near future. Um, if you haven't went on our website yet, take a look at it. It's been updated and there's a lot of um, you can see our roadmap and where we're going in the future, where we are right now, and, and you can get the, get excited about uh, really, really cool stuff that's coming. Lisa, thank you for that for that great presentation and introduction to NFTs. I have a, qu a few questions for our, our Q and A session this afternoon. As, as we introduce the NFT marketplace to our athletes, entertainers, artists that we're working with, can you discuss a little bit about the, uh, I guess the, the working relationship between the TNNS token and how we'll incorporate that in the NFT marketplace? Yeah, so TNNS will be used uh, for the, the subscription portion of it. Um, now, when, buyers come on, they'll be able to use several different cryptocurrencies to to purchase uh, any pieces of art. So the value of TNNS is, is in the subscription portion of it, and that helps build our ecosystem. With athletes and creators, what I said, you know, as I mentioned, it, it's really a unique relationship because typically uh, artists produces an NFT and really as that NFT is continued to be sold, they're the ones that are benefiting it from it. Now we can set up contracts, smart contracts, um, where we have split royalties between our artists, our athletes, and our agents. And of course, you know, those terms can, can be negotiable, uh, but really it's an opportunity for athletes to continue to make passive income on NFTs that are created. Um, so their name, image, and likeness um, is really, really, they're benefiting by it being um, 
you know, used within the, these NFTs. And that was actually my next question, how the NFTs tie into NIL. And, and I think you just answered that for me as uh, athletes, all that we would ask as they join our NFT marketplaces, that they lend their name, image, likeness, and then Correct. Uh, the tech team would, would create the content yeah. there. So it's not just a one-time deal, right? So it's not like uh, somebody's asking you for your, your NIL and you get uh, a one-time payment for that. And, and now all of a sudden, whoever got that uh, ability to use your name, image, and likeness is going to continue to, in the NFT space, will continue to make uh, profit off of that every time it's sold. Versus this, the way we're, we want to set it up is you are working with the artist and you get royalties in perpetuity. So let's say you, you come out with your first collection, you have a thousand of NFTs of your very first collection and it gets sold and you become a, uh, you know, you go from 30th in the world on the tennis space, let's say, to number one in the world. And now all that sudden that first collection, as we talked about value, becomes much, much more valuable. Well, if you just sold your name, image, and likeness for, let's say, $25,000, you don't get any royalties on that anymore. And we're saying, no, we'll set up the contract so that every time that NFT is sold, one of those first thousands is sold, you get a portion of that every single time. And, um, of course, that can be incredibly valuable, much more than 25000 I mean, we're, we could talk millions, uh, depending on where, where those collections go. And we've seen companies doing that and uh, exploiting athletes and, and artists and entertainers in this way by mm -hmm. perhaps giving a, a big lump sum of cash up front. And uh, when, when we're able to capture these unique moments, they, they might be able to make that amount in royalties uh, in perpetuity, like you mentioned. Correct. The, uh, the royalty structure is interesting as we continue to try to level the playing field and, and we've all noticed the, uh, I guess, inequities and across music and sports and artistry. Um, just generally, how do you think the crypto world and NFTs will help kind of democratize the artistic process and, and reward the people actually creating the content. Yeah, um, I think that's what everybody's super excited about. Um, as I said, NFTs are, they're only limited by your creativity. <laughs> so there's a lot of um, flaws, especially within the music world. And um, I, I was just listening to an expert in the space talk about even ticketing. Um, where seat licensing fees are being paid and then um, there's a resale market for that and the original owners aren't getting paid on, on that. And so now there's the ability to, again, have those royalties trickle down in perpetuity. Um, and then when we talk about artists and you know musicians, for instance, and, and third parties that come into play, we're essentially taking out these third parties. And, and as you said, the, the democratizing of this and to be able to, uh, to really be paid what you should be paid um, and uh, for, your, for your energy, for, for what you bring into the space. And so uh, that's where it gets super exciting. And, and again, in, in the athlete world, uh, you, you, I know athletes are wanting to spend time focusing on their craft. And so this gives the ability to, to really do that and to partner with, with an artist and say, okay, yes, please create this of me. And you guys have uh, some decisions in that. You guys have some say in what that looks like. And then um, to kind of just forget about it and let it be passive income and for artists to, to, to be paid for, for what they're doing. Last two questions. And, and you mentioned like the collectibles and perhaps uh, some of the nostalgia has gone now that we don't have hard tickets anymore and we aren't collecting yeah. programs anymore. Do you see a world in which you may walk into someone's house and they'll have their NFTs hanging on the wall, for instance, or they're able to, Kind of mint those collectibles and still still grab those unique moments to celebrate and hold on for later 
yeah, uh, of course, we're going to see a lot of digi digital pieces of art that, you know, that as this becomes a, a bigger um, market, and it already has started to gain so much traction um, that people will physically um, put these up. Uh, you know, whether it's on a TV screen or some sort of digital frame or something like that. Um, but I think the the next thing is, is we talk about just this, the, the metaverse and going into these virtual realities and uh, augmented realities um, where NFTs are going to be displayed within those. And I know it's kind of hard to believe right now, but digital land is being sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, I there will definitely be digital art galleries within those spaces and uh, people that own uh, very unique pieces. Um, there's something called Beeple. You guys can look this up. It, it was sold for like 60 something million dollars uh, earlier this year. And, and that, that's just one piece of art. And again, millions and millions are being spent on this. Um, the space will grow and, and it, it will become uh, the norm eventually, um, and uh, I'm sure everybody's going to own an NFT. Of course, they might name it something else because NFT doesn't make a ton of sense if <laughs> people are like, "What's fungible?" Right. But uh, it, it definitely is. It, it will stick around. Now, whether or not uh, it continues to be millions of dollars, I don't know. We'll see. Again, that's speculative. But of course, there's many things that w can be done in the NFT space, and and we'll we'll capitalize on those. We'll leave our viewers with this one, as I'm sure a lot of our athletes and stakeholders are interested, just to hear about where what you think the next month or two may look like for TNNS and the pursuit of a centralized exchange. Let's say. Yeah, we're we're in um, our last auditing phase. We actually are in talks with two different centralized exchanges, uh, and we are just about ready to launch on those. and And the plan is to launch our marketplace and uh, in conjunction with us being listed on a centralized exchange. So it will create a lot of buzz around TNNS and the token. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And I know uh, everybody's been in anticipation of this and it's going to be a big deal. And uh, we'll, we'll pump out a lot of marketing with it. And uh, I think everybody can be excited. Those that are holding TNNS and those that are looking to invest, uh, there's, there are big things coming and uh, it should be very, very soon here, uh, early 2022, if not before then. A big 2022 for TNNS, we're sure of. Lisa yes. Faulkner, thank you again. Lisa is our crypto coach and educator. She can be reached at Lisa at tnns.pro. I can be reached anytime for questions at john, j-o-n, at tnns.pro. That'll do it for round two of Lisa's educational sessions. Uh, we wish all of our athletes and friends and family uh, best of luck in their seasons and a happy holiday season. And we'll all reconnect soon uh, for more great news on TNNS and the NFTs. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa.